Hey everyone, how's it going Cloud here and welcome to my guide on the Do No Evil quest. Now for this quest you need the following requirements and there are quite a few, um, I will write these in the video description as well just to make sure you've got them all. So you need to complete these quests, Animal Magnetism, Shadow of the Storm, Desert Treasure, Smoking Kills, Missing My Mummy and Dealing with Skabaris. And you need to have also done these additional things. So you need to have fully restored Sen Litten from the Missing My Mummy quest. Now, my actual Missing My Mummy quest guide shows you how to complete it to 100%. So if you've gone uh, via that video, you should already have done this. And on your quest uh, interface, like it's being displayed now, it should be crossed off if you've done that. You also need to have rescued King Awaiji in the Recipe for Disaster subquest. And again, there's a respective guide in the video description for that. The only one that's not crossed off which I will show you to do at the beginning of this video is to bring Leela to St. Litton's tombs so you need to do this to be able to actually start the quest so for those of you who haven't done that don't worry as I'll show you how to do that just at the beginning of this video that's it for quest requirements. As for skill requirements, you need level 50 ranged, level 64 construction, level 68 crafting, level 70 magic, however 82 plus magic will make it easier, and level 70 thieving. You're also going to need to be able to defeat 10 lesser demons, level 76, and you're also going to need to defeat level 98 Leuni, Ayuni, and Iruni, who are the three main bosses of this quest, but we'll talk about those a bit later on. So that's it for requirements, now on to the items. So um, I've currently got like all these items sort of with me, but I will um, tell you what parts you need the certain items so then you can choose to bring only a few uh, bits at a time. And at one particular part on this quest, you're gonna need a fair few inventory spaces free, so um, just bear that in mind. But you will need 10 bananas, 60 planks, 10 bolts of cloth, a spade which can be obtained during the quest, three ropes, three knives, any type of cat or kitten, a desert shirt, robe and desert boots, mask ear muffs or a slayer helmet for one of the battles, the gorilla grigri, a ring of Karath activated, Ava's accumulator, monkey speak amulet, the monkey speak amulet mold and again this can be purchased during the quest, uh, ghost speak amulet, enough runes for 20 plus casts of the ice spells which excludes ice rush and at least a thousand coins. Some recommended items would be water skins or the enchanted water tiara to survive against the desert heat, a Tokel Zo and Ninja Monkey Grigri um, to help with transportation to Apatol, Polnaviak teleport um, or your house at Polnaviak um, for easy transportation to there and the desert amulet too so you have unlimited teleports to Nardar and of course obviously weapon, armour and food for the boss battles which we'll talk about later on. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest itself, so be warned it is quite a lengthy quest there is a fair bit to do in it and uh, I didn't realize before I actually did the quest how long it was actually going to take me and um, so there may be some parts where you want to come back to so just sort of make a note on where you are up to in this video so you can carry on at another time if you wish but anyway um, enough about that now on to the quest starting point so obviously the quest starting point isn't actually at this part where I am now however I'm going to show you how to get Leela to go to the um, Sen Litten pyramid um, because because obviously you need to be able to do that to actually start the quest itself. So we're currently at the Drainer Village Lodestone, uh, which can be accessed via the Lodestone Network, and we want to go and speak to Leela, who is found north of the jail. Now, if you've started Stolen Hearts up to the point where Leela is involved, you must finish both Stolen Hearts and Diamond in the Rough before Leela will return to Drainer Village. So once you find uh, Leela, speak to her and go through some dialogue. And the two of you will then travel to Uza Mastaba, which is the pyramid where uh, Sen Litten, the uh, Pharaoh Queen that you revived, is found. And you then want to talk to Sen Litten and Leela, and ask the Queen if there's any way you can be of service. Sen Litten will say yes, but first she'll tell you a story of her childhood um, about her and the monkeys. Monkeys during her time were both friendly and revered creatures, however it now appears uh, that their lands of empire have turned to the desert, and the monkeys have died out. She'll ask for your help in restoring the sacred monkeys to the land, and she'll suggest that it's connected to the goddess Athmechan, and directs you to speak to Jex and Sphinx, who are both found in Sofanum, to learn all there is to know about Athmechan. 
So for this part you will need just your cat or kitten if you're bringing selected items with you. And we now need to head to Sophanum. So there's several ways you can get there um, with the release of Menaphos. So you can either choose to teleport to the Menaphos Lodestone uh, if you have it activated and then you can go straight into Sophanum from the main gate. Uh, if not you can use the magic carpets all around uh, the desert to get to Sophanum. Um, alternatively you've got things like the Pharaoh Scepter if you have access to that. Um, but either way you're going to head to Sophanum and I'll speak to you once you're there. So, once you're in Sophanum, you want to talk to Jex, who can be found at the Wreck Temple in the northeast part of the city, and ask him about the Minor Gods, and then ask him all the questions about Admechan. Next, you now want to go to the Sphinx, who's just nearby, and make sure you have your cat out, otherwise the Sphinx won't talk to you, and then ask about the Minor Gods, and then ask all the dialogue options about Admechan. So once you've spoken to uh, Jex and the Sphinx and gone through all the dialogue options about the goddess at Mechan, you now want to return to the Pharaoh Queen. So um, the quickest way to get there, if you do have it, was the um, Desert Amulet 2. It will teleport you directly to Nardar and then the Pyramids Temple, whatever you want to call it. It's just north from there. Um, if not, you've got the Fairy Rings or just get back there via the Magic Carpets. But I'll speak to you once you've returned. So once you return to the Pharaoh Queen, she'll say that although Admechan is the most humble god, allowing her monkeys to die was a great affront to her honour, people should not be surprised that the desert is a cruel, harsh and unfriendly place when they have turned their back on the goddess of friendship, and she'll ask you to reintroduce the monkeys to the desert as free creatures. So for this next part we need to head to Ape Atoll. Uh, the items you're going to want here is any form of Grigory and your monkey speak amulet. I would make sure you've got 15 to 20 empty inventory spaces as that's going to help uh, this next particular part which is a little bit annoying if you're trying to do it with restricted spaces as I found out. Um, and when you're ready you then want to go to Ape Atoll by whatever way you can. So you've either got the choice of teleporting to Ape Atoll by using the spell or if you've got access to the fairy ring and the uh, ninja Ninja Monkey Grigory, you can use the code CLR to teleport there. If not, the traditional way to get there is to go to the Tree Gnome Stronghold and then, like you would have done in the Monkey Madness quest, use the various gnomes to make your way to Apatol. But I'll speak to you once you've arrived there in whatever way you choose. So once you're on Apatol, you want to go into the Temple of Marimbo, which is the temple on the eastern part of the island, and speak with the Three Wise Monkeys. After some conversation, you'll want to admit to them that you're really human and they'll ask for you for proof, meaning you need to lead the monkey god away from the three monkeys in order to safely show your form. Now, this bit's a very frustrating bit um, and it took me quite a few attempts, so that's why I recommend having as many empty inventory spaces as you can, as that will help. So what you need to do is take some green bananas from the crate to the east of the monkeys and lay a trail from the monkey to that crate by dropping bananas on the ground at regular intervals. Starting from the northwest, going towards the southwest, then the southeast and then the northeast to the room. But there should be no more than two spots between the bananas, um, but you can go diagonally. So it's recommended to have 15 or more bananas in inventory when laying them and also put the bananas on the action bar will allow you to drop them quickly. If the trial ends any time before the guard is within sight of the pile of bananas he will then return to his original position by the monkeys. You also need to be careful of the other monkey guards because if you put the bananas too close to them they will eat him 
you know, eat him, sorry, it's a bit cannibalistic. Um, they will eat the bananas and then he will return back to his original spot. So the best strategy with this really is, like I said, putting the bananas on your uh, uh, toolbar, ability bar, whatever you want to call it, so you can drop the bananas more uh, quickly, and uh, there's less click intensity there, and also making sure you've got plenty in your inventory. So you want to basically um, learn a monkey around the monkey guards, and like I said, you can go diagonally, um, so you don't have to worry about that, um, but you will also notice he does eat the bananas quite quickly, so you don't want to spend too long putting them on the ground, otherwise he will just go back to the beginning now the get a bit with this is obviously there's no real penalty for failing it other, um, other than you're gonna have to keep redoing this process until you get it right so it doesn't matter how many times it does take you however it does get a little bit frustrating after a while so you'll notice I tried to do it with barely any inventory spaces free and then I end up getting a bit annoyed so I end up dropping some items to come back uh, and then redo it when I had more spaces so yeah, if you just watch what I'm doing on the video, um, I'll show you the successful attempt, you'll see how i done it, and if you just do a similar strategy, you shouldn't have too much trouble with that. So after successfully luring the guard to the crate, you want to talk to the three wise monkeys again, and after you move your Grigri, you'll show that you're really human, and they'll urge you to put it back on before you're discovered. They'll then test your knowledge of Matt Mechan by asking you a couple of questions about her. You want to respond that Mechan had a baboon head when she was in a comical mood. Next, tell them that the only place that the squirrel could sit that the monkey couldn't was on the monkey's shoulders. After you've got the three wise monkeys to trust you, you then need to talk to King Arawiji, who is in the building south of the temple, and you need to convince him to start a colony. So after you start talking to him, make sure you do not mention Ab Mechan to him or you'll be imprisoned. He'll immediately take up the idea but insist on building one in Karamja and persuade him that the desert would be a wiser option by telling him of the uh, deliciousness and popularity of the Chock Ices. The king will get excited and commission Chock Ices in the shape of monkeys, uh, which will be called Chimp Ices. Now, before you uh, leave Abatol, it's recommended that you buy an am uh, a monkey amulet mould for 10 coins from the crafting shop, which is directly west of the temple, as you'll need this to make a chimp ice. It won't be consumed, um, so if you have one in your bank, you can use that if you wish. So for this next part, we're going to be making our way to Nardar. You're going to need your monkey amulet mould, your monkey speak amulet, and any Grigory except the zombie one. Uh, you're also going to need a thousand coins for buying a chimp ice and ancient uh, magic spell book and runes for any of the ice spells. If you're not sure how to get to the ancient magic spell book, you need to go to the desert treasure uh, pyramid um, and go around the back of it and pray at the altar to turn your normal spell book into the ancient magic spell book. So when you're ready, make your way to Nardar, whichever way you like, uh, quickest way is by obviously Desert Amulet 2, or however way you've been doing it at the beginning. Um, when you're ready, you need to go and start the delivery, and you need to talk to a rocker, who is the owner of Rock's Chocks Box. Talk to him about making a special chock ice in the shape of a monkey, and he'll tell you that he needs a mould to make one, so you'll allow him to borrow your monkey amulet mould, and he'll agree to make you one for a thousand coins, and you can buy more later for him from the same price. He'll then hand over the chimp ice, but he'll warn you that because of its irregular shape, the magic used to keep the treat frozen is seeping out, and to keep the chimp ice from melting, you'll have to periodically cast one of the ancient magic ice spells on it. Uh, in order to freeze the treat, you want to left click on the chimp ice and select the freeze option, and then select your ice spell. Also, due to the volatile nature of the magic holding the chimp ice together, you're restricted to routes that don't use teleportation, uh, commercial gnome gliders, spirit trees, or grand tree pods. So in order to get to Ape the Toll, you will need to uh, use the old way to get there. And that way is the way you would get there via the Monkey Madness quest, which is by going to the Tree Gnome Stronghold, speaking with Deiro, who is on the first uh, floor of the tree, to go into the uh, hangar, then Wadar to take you to Crash Island, and then Lumbo to take you to Abatol. 
So obviously I mentioned about the ice spells and this is why at the beginning of the quest I said the higher uh, magic level you got the more uh, beneficial it's going to be. So um, with level 17 magic you can cast ice burst which will freeze your chin pies for 45 seconds. Um, with 82 uh, magic uh, you then can cast ice blitz which will uh, freeze it for around 50 seconds and then if you have access to ice barrage which is level 94 magic you'll freeze the chimp ice for 60 seconds so basically what you need to do here is make your way to a patrol without using any form of teleportation um, I'll tell you the different routes that you can use that won't allow the uh, chimp ice to melt and obviously periodically you need to keep um, casting the ice spell on the chimp ice to keep it frozen. That's why I recommend bringing plenty of uh, runes with you in order to cast that specific spell however many times you need. Now there's quite an easy route to get to Apatol without having to waste too much time and I would recommend you do this as it's the one that doesn't have any sort of specific requirements as such. There are other ways that you can use to get there quicker but they require certain quests and uh, activities completed. So uh, this is known as the Charter Ship Route. So from Narda you want to use a magic carpet to go to Shanty Pass uh, via Polnaviak. When you arrive in Shantae Pass, talk to Shantae and get sent to jail by asking him what is this place, I am definitely an outlaw, prepare to die. You'll be then uh, teleported into the uh, little jail and then he'll give you the choice to either pay a fee to escape or to be deported to Port Sarim, choose to be deported to Port Sarim. When this happens, you will then arrive in the Port Sarim jail, pick the lock on the jail door to get out and then what you can do is use the um, port to travel from Port Sarim to Catherby via the charter ship. When you then arrive in Catherby, you want to start running in the direction of the Grand Tree. Uh, you can rest at the Musician at the Fishing Guild on the way if you need to. Uh, and obviously make sure throughout all this time you are uh, freezing your chin pie so it doesn't melt. Once you arrive at the Grand Tree, um, you want to climb to the first floor of it, go east and speak to Dayro and select travel. Then you want to take Wadar's glider to Crash Island and then Lumbo's boat to Apatol. Once on Apatol, make sure you've got your Grigri equipped and then you want to start heading uh, to the gate um, to the north of you and the apes will allow you through. And then you want to uh, head to where King Aroegi is. So yeah, that's sort of the quickest and easiest route to sort of cheat on getting to Apatol. Uh, obviously you could choose to walk all the way, but obviously that's going to require a lot of uh, freezing of your chimp ice. So as long as you go by that route and you keep freezing your chimp ice enough time so it doesn't melt, you won't have any troubles there. So while still a monkey, talk to the king, he'll eat the chimp ice and enjoy it so much that he grants you permission to set up the desert colony and will supply you a barrel of monkeys to populate it. We then need to go and talk to the wise monkeys again in the temple. When you ask where they want to go, they'll tell you to take them between the camel humps and they jump into the barrel so you can head out. So the items needed for this next part is your monkey speak amulet, your barrel monkeys which you are given and a ring of cars activated and the recommended items will be desert survival gear uh, and also the enchanted water tiara or water skins. So the location for the new monkey colony is in the camel hump like mountain in the Crisian desert and that's located southwest of the de uh, desert mining camp as shown uh, on the map. The easiest way to get there is to teleport to the bandit camp lodestone and then it's literally just a short walk north from there. So 
So when you arrive and you release the monkeys, the colonists and unarmed monkey guards will make a camp and the wise monkeys will sort of sit on some rocks. Talk to the wise monkeys and they'll demand that they be given a carpet route to and from their colony and will ask you to speak to Ali Morrison. So we need to go to Alcarid with the Ring of Karas activated, equipped, and the quickest way to go there is via the Alcarid Lodestone. And then we want to talk to Ali Morrison, who is located north of the Lodestone. So ask him about starting a new carpet route, but he says he isn't interested as he's lost money trying to start new routes in the past. With a bit of persuasion, he'll tell you he was trying to set up a route to the pyramid north of Menophos, but when transporting a carpet, it got caught in a sandstorm. His cousin Alex the Brave escaped with his life and his goods were lost in a desert. The goods were kept in five large metal crates and he has heard tales of Ava's work with undead chickens and magnets. He was intending to have her build him a device that could detect metal underground, but he doesn't have time to do it himself. If you ask him to hire you for the task of recovering the crates, he'll say you'd only find the rugs and use them yourself, to which you reply that's not a bad idea. So for the next part, we'll need Ava's accumulator and a spade. Uh, you can obtain um, a spade near where Ava is located, and equipment for defeating some small scarabs. So we need to head to Drainer Manor, um, so the quickest way to get there is via the Drainer Village Lodestone. Then we need to head north and go into the secret room where Ava is located. So talk to Ava about making a metal detector, she'll study the crate and upgrade your device to Ava's Alerta. In addition to the upgraded range bonus and all the perks it gave you before, the alert will now warn you when you're near a crate which is exactly like the one you showed her. Ava will hide the crate in the ground of the manor and ask you to test the alerter, so you want to equip it and go into the southeastern room of the manor and pick up a spade and then go outside. From here, go to the fountain in the southwest corner of the grounds, but make sure you're not wearing any metallic armour or the alerter will not work. Walk from the fountain a short distance northeast, and you'll know you've stepped on the right spot because the alerter will start doing like a chicken noise um, and it will do it four times in a single line if you've uh, got on the actual spot. So obviously the more the chicken bruck appears in the chat bar the closer you're getting. So when you um, are on the right spot use the spade to dig up the crate and then you want to return to Ava and tell her the good news and she'll take the crate. If you have more accumulators to use, you can now take them to A and have them upgraded to alerters by talking to her. So we now need to return to the desert using the bandit camp lodestone, and we need to search for the crates in the area west of the desert mining camp, northeast of the monkey camp. So the locations of the crates are uh, different for each player, um, however they are in this vicinity and what you need to do is make sure you just kind of do what we did in Drainer Manor and keep heading to each of the uh, spots, sort of keep moving around until you start seeing the uh, bucks uh, increase in quantity and as you obviously get closer uh, and it appears as four bucks, that's then when you want to dig uh, to retrieve a crate. Now, small scarabs may appear when you try to dig up the metal crate, so you'll have to defeat them before trying to dig up the crate again. The crate will contain either gems, water skins, the bundle of carpets, or nothing. Make sure you do not cut any gems you receive, as they can be used in the next part of the quest. So, once you come across the carpets, you want to bring them back to the Three Wise Monkeys and talk to them. They will then set up carpet routes with Shantae Pass and Southern Polnaviak. And one of the monkeys will hand you a book, Economy Building for Dummies, detailing what items you need to build the colony. So we need to head to a bank and gather the supplies to proceed with the next section. And the most convenient bank is probably the one at Shantae Pass, which can be easily reached via the new carpet route. So for this next part, you'll need your monkey speak amulet, saw and hammer, which can be in the tool belt, six teak planks, ten bolts of cloth, a rope, an uncut sapphire, emerald, ruby and diamond which you should have obtained uh, during the hunt for the uh, magic carpets, uh, 10 bananas, 3 knives, 3 water skins with 4 doses in, a desert shirt, desert robe and desert boots. Again if you don't have uh, enough space for all of those items in one go you can make multiple trips. 
so the economy building for dummies book must be read in order to be able to start this section it is recommended to wear the desert clothing and note the 10 bananas three knives and three water skins so that all the items can be carried in one trip so to start the building remove the rubble from the four building spots you then want to build the stalls in the stall um, plots and then build a tent in the tent plot when the stalls are built they must be stocked with goods and you can simply click on the st uh, stall and navigate through the interface so after building the colony the wise monkeys will complain they're not adequately protected and send you to steal six monkey knives from the king's guards the wise monkeys tell you that you need great strength to knock them out and pickpocket them, so you will need a Gorilla Grigri. So we now need to return to Apatol uh, using uh, the previous method you've got there. Once you arrive on Apatol, you need to find the building with the Monkey Knife Fighters, which is located directly north of the Magical Market. So what you need to do uh, is knock out one of the uh, monkey knife fighters and then uh, attempt to pickpocket them in order to try and steal some monkey knives. You will obtain other items during this part, um, but you want to just basically keep repeating this process until you get all six knives. And when you have those, you then want to return to the three wise monkeys to hand them over. So once you've returned and handed over the knives, um, you then want to return to Sen Litten, uh, the Pharaoh Queen, um, back in her pyramid. So again, head to her however way you have been. So when you arrive, you'll see a cutscene where Ozman demands Leela to return to her post in Draenor, but she'll refuse. Sen Litten will congratulate you on what a great job you've done, but then she pauses and notes that something is wrong, and she asks you to return to the colony quickly. So once again, use the Bandit Camp uh, Lodestone um, to head that way. Now, you will need some items with you um, to be able to do this part, which will be your Monkey Speak Amulet. You'll need either Mast Ear Muffs or a Slayer Helmet and a Ghost Speak Amulet. So make sure you've got those items with you. So when you arrive, you'll find the colony in ruins and investigate a corpse to make a dead monkey appear. You won't be able to understand it unless you somehow figure out how to get the effects of both the Monkey Speak Amulet and the Ghost Speak Amulet. So use one of the amulets on the other to combine them and make a Cramulet and then try to talk to the Ghost Monkey again. Wearing your new amulet, the Ghost Monkey will tell you that three masked murderers kidnapped the three wise monkeys and massacred everyone else in the colony, although he will claim that somehow managed to stay alive. The Ghost Monkey will tell you that he knows where they are keeping Irizaru and will direct you to the Polnaviak Slayer Dungeon. So, we're now up to the um, part of the quest where you're going to have to fight the three main bosses uh, and they are three uh, monkeys um, and they sort of represent the um, uh, three wise monkeys that you're obviously going to try and protect uh, and each of them have their own sort of uh, style of attack and strategy. So I'll talk about each of the boss's strategies just as you kind of get up to uh, that particular part but for the overall fights and that I would probably recommend going with a ranged um, output depending obviously on your range level and all that and um, if you uh, find you're better as a melee fighter or magic fighter then obviously go with those instead. So Leuni is the first boss monster encountered which is a creation of Amaska and she is located in the Polnaviak Slayer dungeon where the Banshee Mistress was during the Smoking Kills quest. So making sure you've either got Mast Ear Muffs or your Slayer Helmet equipped and obviously plenty of food and equipment um, you then need to head into the uh, Polnaviak Slayer dungeon and then head to where the barrier is and when you pass the barrier a cutscene will play. So, during this fight, the main thing Leone will do can force the player's helmet or earmuffs off, which will then cause you to start taking damage from the smoke and lower your stats if not re-equipped fast enough. If the player's inventory is full, Leone cannot remove the helmet and becomes enraged, instantly dealing damage. Therefore, it's highly recommended that you keep one item slot free and watch your inventory. Leone will attack with melee and a projectile attack that deals simultaneous damage with both range and magic so the attack cannot be completely blocked, only one portion of the projectile's damage can be negated uh, using the relevant prayer. Uh, she also has the ability to teleport around the arena every once in a while, however range does seem to be relatively effective at hindering her teleport ability. 
So as long as you're being careful with making sure you re-equip your helmet or earmuffs every time it's unequipped, you shouldn't have too much struggle with this fight. After defeating Leonie, at Mechum will appear. She says that she plucked words from her lips and moulded them into Leonie. She can no longer reassure the desert people, so they turn distrustful and fought with one another. You will then talk with Irazaru, who will automatically return uh, to the colony. You then want to speak to the ghost monkey again, and you must make sure your Kramlet is uh, equipped, and he'll say that he managed to locate Mizaru, and Mizaru is being held hostage in the Calphite Hive in a room adjacent to the Calphite Queen. So again, uh, same setup is recommended here, um, but you will also need to make sure you have two ropes with you if you haven't visited the Cow Fight Queen previously, and an anti-poison might come in handy as well, and obviously restock up on food and other supplies if you need to. So Ayuni is the second boss monster encountered and can be accessed through a tunnel in the north wall of the Cow Fight Queen's chamber. As it's very likely you'll be attacked by either the Calphite Queen or one of the Guardians on the way through, it is recommended to bring the Anti-Poison. So what you need to do is head to the Calphite Queen uh, entrance and then and navigate your way through the tunnels. So as soon as you enter the Calphite Queen's chamber, you want to run directly to the north wall and click to go through that, and this is where you will find the boss fight. So, Ayuni's main strength is her melee attack, which is very strong and hits very fast and accurately. Um, but she does move around quite at very slow speed, so probably about half the speed of normal work uh, walking. So this is what encourages you to either use range or magic against her, that way you can keep a good distance. Ayuni is capable of draining the player's prayer by up to 250 points per attack using her magic and melee attacks. When Ayuni's health starts to drop lower, she'll begin to use teleports to momentarily catch up with you. Um, so the main strategy with this one is just to keep sort of moving around, keeping your distance away from Ayuni, and keep uh, doing as much damage with range or magic as you can. Um, as long as you're sort of keeping that distance away from you, she shouldn't do too much damage to you. After the battle, at Mechon will appear again. She will say that she chipped her sight from her eyes, which bore Ayuni, and she can no longer watch over the desert people, so they turn to darkness. You want to then equip your Cramulet and talk to Mizaru, and he will tell you what is going on. He says how a long time ago when he was young, there were two goddesses, at Mechon the goddess of friendship and Amaskut the goddess of evil and destruction. It is said that Amaskut considered at Mechon too weak and insignificant to deal with. However, at Mechon was secretly working with some of the lesser deities to bring peace to the desert, and they patched the ill feeling between Alcarin and Menaphos. Fifty years ago, the progressive young pharaoh of Menaphos, a worshipper of Mechon, proposed an alliance of Al Karid. Amaskut was furious, war was her tool for destruction, and she cursed the pharaoh and hunted down at Mechon. They fought in the desert where Amaskut was stronger, but unable to destroy at Mechon, she cursed her by stealing her sight, hearing, and speech. And this is then what created the three monkeys that you're fighting against. So, talk with Mizaru again to return the colony, and speak with the ghost monkey, and he'll tell you that he's found the location of the last monkey somewhere in the ruins of Uza, and this will be the final fight, uh, and we'll find uh, the final monkey in the uh, room in the Shadow of the Storm quest, where you fought the demon. So once again, make sure you use this time to stock up on food and other items that you need before you're ready to proceed. And when you are ready, um, it's recommended you either use the Nardar Teleport or Magic Carpet to make your way to the ruins of Uza. Go uh, downstairs in the ruins and then you've got the uh, secret like portal chamber and when you enter that, that's where you'll find Eruni. So Eruni is the final boss of the quest. Um, like I said, she's located where uh, you fought Agrif Nar in Shadow of the Storm. Uh, unlike her sisters, Aruni will remain stationary in the centre of the room for the entire fight. Also unlike her sisters, she has no melee attack and only uses a projectile attack that deals both range and magic damage and hence can only be partially blocked. So Aruni is the hardest of the three boss battles since Aruni is able to do damage to you while also summoning lesser demons that she'll summon and when the demons are spawned she'll become invulnerable and the demons must be slain for her to become vulnerable again.
Um, it is possible to save spot Aruni by hiding behind the horn-like pillars. Uh, doing this will mitigate a large amount of damage when fighting the demons. So, um, when Aruni's health is 100%, there'll be one demon spawned. When it's 75%, there'll be two demons spawned. 50% will be three, and 25% will be four. And like I said, you need to dispatch of the demons before you can carry on doing damage to Aruni. So you'll probably find yourself taking a lot of damage during this uh, battle, as you'll notice I did. Um, I didn't really use the safe spot as much as I should have done, um, but the main strategy really is just to kind of dispatch the demons as quick as possible, as Aruni can still attack you while you're trying to uh, deal with them. So after defeating Aruni, our mecha will appear once again and she will say that she crafted Aruni after stealing all sound from her ears. She can no longer hear the voice of the desert people and became isolated from them. Soon the desert people became deaf to each other's pleas, losing reason and mercy. You then want to speak to Kikazaru who will then return you to the monkey colony. So once back at the colony, speak with the monkeys and Rosario will say they always meant to return since the desert was their real home. However, life in Apatol was comfortable and they had plenty of scope for mischief. It was only the mention of Admechan that brought them back along with the humans who had helped them build a colony. At Mechan will then appear and speak to you as your deeds have restored her senses. As the three wise monkeys cannot sense her, they think that you've gone insane. And you'll have a short uh, chat with At Mechan in which you'll say she'll be able to return to her duties as a goddess and if need be, battle Amaskut herself. The camp will then be rebuilt with hours of your hard labour and then you can return to Sen Litten to finally complete the quest. So after you finish speaking to Sen Litten, she will thank you for all you've done and it will come up with congratulations, you have completed the Do No Evil quest. You're awarded one quest point, 50,000 magic and thieving experience, 40,000 crafting and 30,000 construction experience, new magic carpet destinations, the Cramlet which will have the ability to add other speaking amulets to it, the ability to upgrade Ava's accumulator to Ava's alerter, you can run the Chimpice mini game for further rewards, you can pickpocket the monkey knife fighters. Um, um, you'll have access to the monkey colony. You'll get one free clue scroll elite with Ava's alerter. Uh, the clue scroll can be found in either my ditch on the iceberg or in Isafada or on Lunar Isle. You'll also get two treasure hunter keys and two hearts of ice. So there we are, quest complete. So as I uh, pre-warned you, quite a lengthy quest this one. There's a lot of uh, traveling around and things to complete. Uh, and obviously having three kind of bosses in this quest is quite unique because not many quests had that many bosses to them. Um, now there is an additional reward and activity you can do. So players with level 80 range and um, boost can be used, uh, can enter a cavern on the cliff that it makes up the south wall of the monkey colony, which is just where um, you'll see on the screen I'm showing it now. Now, and you'll get 20,000 agility experience by doing this uh, and you'll gain access to a secret treasure room which contains an app mechan mask and um, an ankh which is like a uh, magic uh, range weapon I'm not 100% sure um, but they're more for sort of like cosmetic rewards and sort of to tick off things you uh, need to complete for like completionists and that um, obviously if you don't have level 80 range or don't have a high enough boost in order to do it you can come back here at a later date when you have the uh, levels to do so but yeah overall the quest isn't really that difficult as such just more lengthy obviously the experience rewards are quite decent and the Ava's alert is quite good as well with its range bonuses and that so those of you who've used Ava's accumulator and that before will be quite uh, pleased to have the upgraded version of this now before the release of Menaphos, um, this quest wasn't really required for anything else other than the desert tasks, um, however since the release of Menaphos this quest is required for the quest Our Man in the North, uh, and when I've uh, made my guide on that quest that will be available in the video description below so make sure you check that out. One other thing I forgot to mention as well, after completing this quest, the three monkeys that you fought against will be fightable in the Dominion Tower uh, minigame, so you can um, possibly have the chance to fight that, um, and it's classed as a Class A boss monster.
But yeah, other than that, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck at all, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye.